In this video, we're going to continue on solving logarithmic inequalities with looking at problems 4 through 6. If I have log base 4 of x plus 3 is greater than log base 4 of 2x plus 1, since I have one log on both sides and it's the same base, I can cross them out and just work with the expressions. x plus 3 is greater than 2x plus 1. So I would subtract x and get 3 is greater than x plus 1 and then subtract 1 and get 2 is greater than x, which really means x is less than 2. I have to take in consideration my boundaries. Your boundaries are where your expression that you're taking the log of is greater than 0. So x plus 3 is greater than 0, x is greater than negative 3. However, we also have another expression we're taking the log of. Here, it's also 2x plus 1. So 2x plus 1 is greater than 0, which means subtract 1 gives me negative 1 and then divide by 2. x is greater than negative 1 half. Now we have to compare these on our number line. We have our solution of x being less than 2. which would be an open circle on 2 with an arrow going to the left. And we have our boundaries. Our boundaries, it says x has to be greater than negative 3 or x has to be greater than negative 1 half. The question is, which one is the one we need? And so what you have to ask yourself is, which one stops the solution space first? And that would be this x greater than negative one half. It stops it from going further. If I were to go to the left here, it would not be true for this inequality. So you look for the one that stops it first. And so our solution space is a compound inequality where our x value is located between negative one half and two. And so when you have more than one, boundary, you need to see which one stops the solution space first. Here we have log base 5 of 2x plus 1 is less than or equal to log base 5 of x plus 4. Since I have the same base and log on both sides and only one on both sides, I can cross them out and just work with the expressions. 2x plus 1 is less than or equal to x plus 4. Subtract x, you get x plus 1 is less than or equal to 4. Subtract 1, x is less than or equal to 3. So we have to check our boundaries. Again, there's going to be two. The first one where 2x plus 1 is greater than 0. So you would subtract 1 and then divide by 2. So x is greater than negative 1 half. The next one is where x plus 4 is greater than 0, which means x is greater than negative 4. So if we were to look at these on a number line, we mark our solution which we said x is less than or equal to 3. Our boundaries are going to be, we have either 1 at negative 1 half or 1 at negative 4. If I were to sketch the solution space for this x is less than or equal to 3, it'd be a closed circle on 3 with an arrow to the left. Which boundary stops this first? And that would be the negative 1 half. And that means my solutions can only exist between negative one half, which is negative one half is less than x, which is less than or equal to three, because three is included. And lastly, we have log base 11 of 3x minus 24 is greater than or equal to log base 11 of negative 5x minus 8. We have the same log, so we can ignore it. We have 3x minus 24 is greater than or equal to negative 5x minus 8. So I would add 5x, get 8x minus 24 is greater than or equal to negative 8. Add 24, 8x is greater than or equal to 16, and then divide by 8, x is greater than or equal to 2. However, we need to check our boundaries. 3x minus 24 has to be greater than 0. That's the only way that our x values can exist. So add 24 and then divide by 3. 
So your x values can only exist when x is greater than 8. But if we also look at the other expression we're taking logarithm of, negative 5x minus 8 is greater than 0. Negative 5x is greater than 8. And when you divide by a negative 5, what we're going to have to keep in mind is you have to flip the inequality. So x is less than negative 8 fifths. If we were to look at this on the number line, and this one's tricky, it says that x can only exist, our solution is when x is less than, when x is greater than or equal to 2. So that'd be a closed circle on 2 with an arrow to the right. However, the boundaries are tricky. Because one boundary says x has to be greater than 8. And so that would be here. So we see this part of our solution does not exist. But x also has to be less than negative 8 fits. So that would be an open circle here with an arrow to the left. Well, if you take a look, if I were to pick a number over to the right here, say a positive 10, we see it works for this one. But if you were to plug in positive 10 here, you get negative 50 minus 8, negative 58. It doesn't work. Our solution space does not satisfy either of the boundaries in this problem. And so this, since it does not work for any of them, for either of them, is there is no solution. So this is why you always need to check for a boundary even if it's a greater than problem, is to make sure that your solution space is part of the boundary, which we notice it is over here. However, values you pick here will not work because of this boundary as well. So the bottom line is, let's look at one of the first examples. You want to make sure after you solve the inequality, check your boundaries. Easiest way to see if it's included or not is to look at it on a number line and determine where the boundary exists and if it is to be part of the solution space.